In ancient Mexico, a lineage of men and women seers embarked on a navigational journey with the intent to expand the boundaries of human perception. Their explorations led them to states of awareness called dreaming, where they discovered a vast array of bodily positions. Performing these movements, the seers of antiquity perceived that they brought or redeployed energy from the energetic sphere of the body, returning it back to the physical body itself. This energizing effect was so profound that they named them magical passes, passageways to inconceivable states of awareness and well-being. The magical passes became the most valued tool of those seers who taught them from generation to generation to their apprentices. These dreamt movements were taught to Carlos Castaneda and three female disciples by their teacher, Don Juan Matus, a Yaqui Indian from Sonora, Mexico. Don Juan's four apprentices, the last link of his lineage, strove to bring the magical passes out of secrecy. In teaching them in turn to their apprentices, several of whom will be instructing on this video, Carlos Castaneda systematized and developed the magical passes into their modern form, Tinsegrity. This two-part volume on Tinsegrity is the first video companion to Carlos Castaneda's book, Magical Passes, The Practical Wisdom of the Shamans of Ancient Mexico. In the first part of this volume, we will be demonstrating the individual magical passes of the series for preparing intent. This Tinsegrity series consists of 37 magical passes and is based on the premise that returning energy to our physical bodies reawakens our link with the life force that sustains us, an active vibratory force in the universe which shamans call intent. We can intend renewed vitality and enhanced awareness through practicing magical passes. One approach to learning the magical passes presented here in rapid succession is to first watch and enjoy the entire series and then to begin to practice a few movements at a time until the body is prepared for more. The series for preparing intent is the first of six described in Carlos Castaneda's book, Magical Passes. What you are about to watch is a model for practicing this series and shows the recommended number of passes and sequences to follow. The series is comprised of four sequential groups of individual passes which together mash, stir, gather, and redeploy energy. These magical passes redeploy energy to four of the six major centers of vitality in the body. Now, can you show us? The first one is a center of immediate action located in the area of the liver and gallbladder. The center of feeling located around the pancreas and spleen. The center for sustained action located near the kidneys and adrenals. And the center for decisions located at the V at the base of the neck. Shamans believe any effort toward enhanced awareness requires energizing these centers. It demands speed, elegance, persistence, and decision. Let's begin. This group is called Mashing Energy for Intent. We mash with the feet and legs energy that has been dispersed to the bottom of our energetic sphere. This makes energy ready for redeployment and our bodies ready for action. The first magical pass is grinding energy with the feet. It begins by moving the heels right and left. We shift our weight to the heels and we move the toes left and right. The arms move back and forth, engaging the total body. This magical pass brings flexibility to the arms and legs. The second magical pass is grinding energy with three slides of the feet. This time, we perform the grinding notion of the previous magical pass in sets of three. Making this motion discontinuous increases its effect. Grinding energy by a sideways slide of the feet 
is the next magical pass. The feet move left on the heels, the toes, and then the heels. Then they move right in the same fashion. The next magical pass is mixing energy by striking the floor with the heels. The heels lift and strike one after the other. Again, the arms move back and forth. Next is mixing energy by striking the ground with the heels three times. The heels lift and strike in sets of three. These first five magical passes provide a quick surge of energy, stimulating the circulation in the legs and the total body. Now we begin gathering energy with the soles of the feet and moving it up the inner legs. The gathering is done with a scooping motion of the foot. This activates the memory of movements and facilitates learning new ones. In the following magical pass, stirring energy with the knees, we lift each knee across the body as far as possible while moving the trunk in the opposite direction. This magical pass forms a unit with the next one, called pushing the energy stir with the knees into the trunk. The left knee moves to the pancreas area and the right knee to the liver area. Pointing the toes downward stimulates minute energy centers around the ankles. Kicking energy in front and in back of the body is the next magical pass. We lift the legs in alternating fashion, separated by a light hopping motion. The trunk leans forward when the legs kick back, absorbing the energy stirred with the legs. Next is lifting energy from the soles of the feet, bringing the energy to the pancreas on the left and the liver on the right. The abdomen contracts as we lift the arms. This magical pass and the preceding one promote flexibility and aid healthy digestion. The last five magical passes of this group are called steps in nature. They lead practitioners past previous limitations of perception and action. The first is pushing down a wall of energy. It is a push from the hip rather than a kick from the knee. Next is stepping over a barrier of energy. The leg goes all the way across the body before returning to the original position. From there, we begin kicking a lateral gait with a diagonal push kick to the side with the soles of the feet. Now we move on to cracking a nugget of energy. The toes point downward and the foot strikes towards the ground without touching it, stopped by a contraction of the abdomen and the leg. The last step in nature is scraping off the mud of energy. The entire leg moves with an impulse that comes from the hips.
Now we are ready to move on to the second group. We are now going to demonstrate the group of magical passes called Stirring Up Energy for Intent. The energy that has been mashed in the previous group is stirred, awakening the centers of vitality. We intend this by beginning with the position called Turning the Body On. In this position, all our muscles are engaged and we're ready for action. Stirring up energy with the feet and the arms is the first magical pass of this group. The foot brushes the ground as the arm sweeps wide overhead. We pause and repeat this motion two more times. The next magical pass is called rolling energy on the adrenals. The fists are placed behind the adrenals, away from the body, the left above the right. As the body leans forward, the fists roll downward, starting with the left. Then the body leans back and the fists roll upward, starting again with the left. The abdominal muscles are fully engaged. The next magical pass, stirring up energy for the adrenals, helps to build the self-confidence, daring, and endurance necessary for intending. We begin by placing the palms on the knees. The left palm turns as the left knee and elbow move forward. Then we inhale and shift to the same positions on the opposite side. Notice that the hips do not swing from side to side. Be careful not to strain the muscles of the legs and lower back while performing this magical pass. The most beneficial way to perform this or any magical pass may be slightly different for each practitioner. Practicing the magical passes can help us find an elegant and sober way to listen to the body itself and to let it guide our practice. Let's continue with the next magical pass, fusing left and right energy. We inhale and then exhale as the left hand shoots across the chest and bends at the wrist. The right hand moves overhead to end in front of the left. We inhale deeply and then slowly straighten the body to repeat the same positions on the right. Pushing the arms forward creates an opening in the kidney adrenal area, bringing a youthful vigor to the body. Next is piercing the body with a beam of energy. The hands are placed at the same level in front and in back of the body. The hands jolt to point outward with the contraction of the abdomen. The body straightens and the hands swing to reverse position and perform the same movement. The hands are placed in front of the body to begin the next magical pass, twisting energy over two centers of vitality. The right palm moves to face the area of the pancreas and the left moves behind the left adrenal. The upper body turns to the left. The hands pivot for a double count of three. The movements are repeated on the right. We continue with the half circle of energy. The left hand sweeps freely in front of the eyes and is then pulled close to the body 
with the contraction of the abdominal muscles. The eyes follow the hand. The motions are repeated on the right. The right palm is placed above the left to begin the next magical pass, stirring energy around the neck. We inhale and raise the arms to the chest as we turn the torso to the left. The knees face front. We then exhale as the elbows pull apart. We inhale and then exhale, turning the head gently back and forth three times. We place the left hand above the right and repeat the same positions on the right. This magical pass brings energy to the center for decisions. The next magical pass is called kneading energy with a push of the shoulder blades. To begin, the palms face forward at the level of the eyes and the arms are curved. The trunk leans forward, opening the shoulder blades. The arms, remaining curved, push alternately forward, driven by an impulse from the shoulder blades and the abdominal muscles. This magical pass opens a free flow of energy to the center for decisions. The last magical pass of this group is called stirring energy above the head and cracking it. This magical pass reduces fatigue. To begin, the left arm circles twice overhead, creating a ball of energy that is cracked by the forward motion of the arm. We repeat the motion on the right. The stomach and arm muscles contract as the arm descends, and the energy that is cracked is allowed to seep over the entire body. This completes the second group of magical passes for preparing intent. Next, there'll be a quick demonstration of a magical pass that can be integrated into your Tensegrity practice. We rub the palms together briskly, heating up the hands. Then when they're warm, we take it, spread them over the face, over the head, down the neck, the top of the shoulders, and we fling them down with an exhalation. The wrists begin to shake, stimulating minute energy centers there. Then the vibration moves up to the elbows and the whole arm. Then while we're still shaking the arms, Lift the left foot and shake, move the ankle up to the knee and the whole leg. And now the right foot and the right leg. Then we stop and pause and let a tingling sensation go down the arms. This sensation is the vibratory energy of intent. Now we will be gathering energy for intent. The energy that has been mashed and stirred in the first two groups is ready to be placed directly on the centers of vitality and the area around the diaphragm, which awakens our breathing capacity. If we want to awaken our capacity to perceive, we have to awaken our capacity to breathe. 
Each magical pass of this group begins by shaking the hands at the size of the body, stirring the energy of intent. First, we are reaching for energy stirred below the knees, placing the energy gathered onto the vital centers. Next is transporting front energy to the adrenals. We begin by vibrating the hands at the sides of the body with an inhalation. And then we shoot the left hand in front as we exhale sharply. We begin here a long inhalation as we scoop twice in front of the body and swing the arm around, bringing it behind the body at the area of the adrenals and rub the energy on that vital center. We repeat the same motions on the right. Notice that both arms swing and that the back of the front arm is placed below the navel. We continue with a magical pass called scooping energy from the left and the right. It begins with an inhalation as the hands scoop all the way up the sides of the body. We exhale as the arms shoot out, the palms face down. Again, we shoot the arms out with an exhalation. Now the palms face forward. We scoop and return the energy twice more and then place it on the centers of vitality. The next magical pass is called cracking the circle of energy. Three alternating half circles are made on each side of the body. The extending arm is relaxed, while the pulling arm is tensed. Then the right foot steps behind the left. The left steps forward as the left arm scoops at the side of the body. Then the right arm scoops. An inhalation is taken and an exhalation follows as the energy is cracked by tensing the muscles under the arms. The energy is placed wherever it is needed. This magical pass promotes the clarity of intent needed to make decisions. We begin the next magical pass, gathering energy from the front of the body, right above the head, vibrating the hands as we inhale. The inhalation continues as we cross the arms at the wrists, the left closest to the body. We turn the fists to face down and exhale as we push the elbows forward and move the arms over the head. A slow inhalation accompanies a full clockwise circle of the arms. A long exhalation begins as the hands pull apart forcefully and the arm scoop backward. We cross the wrists, turn them, open the fists and place the energy on the vital centers as we exhale the last bit of air. Shamans see that this magical pass cleanses the lungs.
The hands shake as we inhale to begin stirring and grabbing energy from below the knees and above the head. A forceful exhalation is made as the hands shoot in opposite directions, the palms facing outward, and then pull slowly and forcefully to the waist. We rub the gathered energy on the vital centers and straighten the body. We repeat the same positions with the right hand shooting toward the knee and the left hand moving above the head. Next is mixing energy of the left and the right. The hands vibrate as we inhale. The left hand shoots to the right with a sharp exhalation. It pulls energy forcefully to the left. We inhale as the arm rotates backward and exhale as the energy is pulled slowly to the vital centers. We repeat the same motions on the right. Notice that the right arm rotates forward, bringing energy from one side and placing it on the opposite vital center gives a jolt of fresh energy to that center. Next is grabbing energy from above the head for the two vital centers. An inhalation accompanies two forward circles. The eyes select a chunk of energy. We grab it, pull it, and place it on the vital centers. The motions are repeated on the right. The last magical pass of this group is reaching for energy above the head. We jump high and scoop energy, pulling slowly and with great force to the vital centers. The jump stirs energy at the top of the luminous sphere that the hands pull downward. We will now demonstrate breathing in the energy of intent. The breaths in these magical passes direct energy to the adrenal area, the center for sustained action. Shamans believe that intending a new perception of the world requires what they call unbending purpose. The first magical pass of this group is dragging energy from the kneecaps along the front of the thighs. The hands vibrate as we inhale. The arms push downward as we exhale keeping the elbows slightly bent. We continue exhaling, drawing two inward circles with the hands. We inhale and then exhale, drawing three more circles. The muscles of the arms, legs, and abdomen are fully engaged. We continue exhaling, sliding the heels of the hands to the knees. We rest the hands on the kneecaps, the fingertips pressing below, stimulating energy centers there as we inhale fully. We exhale, dragging energy up the thighs and rubbing it on the vital centers.
The next magical pass is dragging energy from the sides of the legs. The hands vibrate as we inhale. We begin exhaling as the hands push downward, the wrists fully bent. We continue exhaling, drawing two small outward circles. We inhale, then exhale, drawing three more circles. Again, the muscles of the arms, stomach, and legs are fully engaged. We continue exhaling as we slide the heels of the hands down the sides of the legs. The first two fingers of each hand press below the knobs of the ankles as we inhale deeply. We exhale and drag the energy up the sides of the legs to the vital centers. Pressing the area below the knobs of the ankles opens a cachet of energy there and renders it fluid. The third magical pass of this group is dragging energy from the front of the legs. The hands vibrate as we inhale, moving the arms over the head to strike in front of the vital centers. We begin exhaling as the hands move forward and back three times. We inhale and then exhale, moving the hands laterally three times. The eyes follow the motion of the hands. We continue exhaling as the hands move down the legs. We bring out tendons on the front of the ankles by lifting the toes. We vibrate that area with the first two fingers as we inhale deeply. We exhale, dragging energy up the legs to the vital centers. This completes the magical passes of the series for preparing intent. We will close by performing a magical pass called opening oneself to intent. The dreamt motions of this magical pass literally dust off our link with intent. You can do this in the morning or when beginning a new project or whenever you want to take a moment to shift to a new mood a new direction. In this magical pass, the practitioners voice the word intent. For shamans, intent is a force that is aware of itself and responds to the beckoning of those who call it, allowing them to intend to live the full possibilities of the human form. We begin with the right hand on the left shoulder. The hand sweeps in a dusting motion down Turn over and come back up and down. And now the right hand goes to the left. Down, up, down. We go up one more time. Inhale, exhale. Intent. Inhale and exhale. In part B of this volume, we will be presenting two long forms of magical passes for intent. The first is the long form of the series for preparing intent. It consists of the 37 individual magical passes demonstrated in part A of this volume, performed in continuous succession. 
Shamans believe that practicing long sequences of movement affords a pathway to inner silence by saturating our kinesthetic memory. Saturating the body with movements found in dreaming, they assert, is the beginning of dreaming itself. The second long form is the saber-toothed tiger of intent. Don Juan Matus described the saber tooth as a symbol of intent for the shamans of his lineage, an emblem of precision and concentration. Practicing the saber tooth form, he said, brings a boost of energy to begin one's daily endeavors. In this volume, the saber tooth brings its prowess and enthusiasm to the series for preparing intent, its unbending intent to unlock the abundant resources of energy that shamans consider to be the birthright of every human being. Before we demonstrate the series as a long form, we will first guide you through practicing each of the four separate groups of this series as complete units. In linking the magical passes of the first group, we are mashing energy for intent at the same time that we are saturating our physical memory with a language that replaces internal dialogue, the language of the magical passes. The first piece of information for a body stream member is that every pass of this long form begins on the left unless otherwise stated. We begin grinding energy with the feet by moving the heels for a double count of six. The weight shifts and the toes move for a double count of three. Grinding energy in sets of three is performed twice. Grinding energy to the side for a double count of three. We point the toes forward, mixing energy with the heels for a double count of three. And mixing energy in sets of three two times. We widen the stance to gather energy with the soles of the feet. The body advances, stirring energy with the knees, and continues to advance, pushing the energy stirred into the trunk. We pause for a moment and stay in place to kick energy in front and back. Again, we advance, lifting energy from the soles of the feet and pushing down a wall of energy. In place, we step over a barrier of energy and kick a lateral gate. We retreat, cracking a nugget of energy and finally scraping off the mud of energy. And now we will do it one more time in silence. Brandon and I will guide you through this group. In addition to waking up our bodies by asking them to link the positions and sequences for this group, we are also stirring energy for intent in the luminous sphere. We begin by turning the body on, and we advance, stirring energy with the feet and arms.
We step back with the right, bringing our hands behind the body, rolling energy on the adrenals. To begin stirring energy for the adrenals, we bring the hands around, inhaling and over the knees. We come up with an inhalation to begin fusing left and right energy. Again, we straighten, leaving our right hand in front of the body to pierce with a beam of energy. Next, we are twisting energy, first on the right, then on the left. We continue performing the half circle of energy, three times on the left, and three times on the right. We place the right hand above the left to begin stirring energy around the neck. First with the right, we begin kneading energy. And again with the right, circling energy over the head and cracking it. Now we will practice in silence. The simplest way to intend a shift of our perception is to alter our breathing. Most of us breathe in a shallow fashion, never using our lungs to full capacity. To breathe in a new way, let's practice two breathing passes before we continue the series. Miles will demonstrate. The first is called the animal breath. We begin by exhaling. 
Then we inhale deeply, pushing down the diaphragm and fully expanding the abdomen. We finish the magical pass by letting the air out. Next is a magical pass called releasing stagnant air. First we inhale and exhale naturally. Then we continue the exhalation by leaning over, contracting the abdomen, pushing out air that normally is never exhaled. When all the air is out, we straighten the body and allow new air to fill the lungs to the very top and a new intent to come in. Now we will continue with our instruction of the long form of the series for preparing intent. In practicing these magical passes, we gather energy for intending from the luminous sphere and place it directly on the vital centers to enhance both physical health and perception. We begin by briskly vibrating the hands. We look and reach for energy below the knees. We inhale and exhale sharply to begin transporting front energy to the adrenals. Turning to the front, we inhale to scoop energy from the left and the right. We pull the left hand away from the vital center to begin cracking the circle of energy. To turn around for the next magical pass, we take the same steps and inhaling, we bring the right arm in front of the body and the left around to be ready to gather energy from the front of the body. We come up with an inhalation to begin grabbing energy from below and above. Again, we inhale before mixing energy from the left and the right. And we finish grabbing energy from above the head. And reaching for energy above the head. Now we will practice in silence.
In this group, Nai and I will demonstrate how to direct the energy inhaled to the vital centers around the adrenals. The deep, continuous breathing that takes place when we string these magical passes together mirrors the sustained, unwavering purpose of the navigator, his unbending intent. Vibrate the hands and inhale to begin dragging energy from the kneecaps. We inhale to begin dragging energy from the sides of the legs. And we finish by dragging energy from the front of the legs. Now we will practice in silence. This completes the fourth group. Now we're ready to link these groups into the long form for preparing intent. For shamans, intent is everything. The inner silence evoked by saturating the body with magical passes can make room for a physical awareness of intent, a shine, a light in the eyes.
We'd like to introduce one of the delights of Tensegrity practitioners, a long form called the Tiger of Intent, which Rylan will demonstrate. This tiger is a saber tooth. It breathes with its entire body and perceives with its whole being. Carlos Castaneda told us that this tiger embodies the passion of the warrior. It knows each moment could be its last. Still, it never lets go of its purpose and has the prowess and elegance to acquiesce to intent. The tiger begins very silently. You're not even aware that it is there. It breathes out, opening its claws. It inhales, clawing at the sides of the body, gripping the ground with its paws. The tiger needs a powerful stance so it doesn't get dragged away. The tiger exhales and claws, moving from the midsection. It inhales, clawing one more time. It advances, the opposite arm and leg moving at once. It flexes its claws with fast strokes. It slashes suddenly to the left. The tiger lets its prey know that death is behind it. With a quick strike, it turns again. Its claws sweep slowly across the view of the horizon. Then quickly, in short energetic strokes, the body is turned on. The tiger pants. It claws and pushes the hind legs forward one at a time. It claws again and strikes with its back legs. It pauses, then leaps in the other direction. The tiger strikes very fast and retreats. Leaning on its back leg, it curls its claws and front paw, measuring its prey. It advances and strikes. It leans in, seizes its prey, and balanced by the enormous strength of its leg, flings the prey behind it. The tiger turns quickly to face another prey. It jumps back, preparing to strike. The tiger runs and leaps, grabbing the prey and bringing it down. It steps back. And breathes deeply, crouching quietly in the shadows. It reaches high and claws downward as the prey takes its last breath. The tiger breathes, turns, and steps forward. The body begins to straighten as we return to the human form. We walk away, headed in a new direction.